In this video, I'll show you how to make a simple overview and room dashboard for your Lovelace. Make sure you stick around and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surridge Tech and today we're going to jump into Lovelace and create a simple overview dashboard which links to room specific pages. So let's get going. So I haven't done a generic dashboard video for a while so I thought I'd show you my latest one. Um, it's this. So in here we have a basic page showing you an overview of the key information for each room uh, with basic kind of useful control, for example the general lights, the music and the temperature. And then if you click on it, you can go to a more detailed view uh, with more information about each room and specific control. This dashboard has developed a bit since I started. I wanted something quick and easy where I could see everything in one place and control it in that one place, basically. Um, so initially I started off with this dashboard where I had a different page for each device type which kind of worked and it, it has its place. Like if I come home and I want the heating on in every room, this is great. But if I'm going into one room and want to set that room up for what I want it to be, then I have to set up the lighting, then go over here, turn the heating up and then go here and turn the music up, which is a bit of a waste of, well, time and effort and everything really. Um, so that's where this one came from because I can do it all in one place now for each room. Right, so I'm going to show you how I create this. In fact, we're going to create it again. So if we go into our Lovelace dashboard and we create a new dashboard, room video, there we go. So first thing we want to do is take control with an empty dashboard. We don't want any of that. And we need a number of tabs. I'll just create two for now. Um, you can obviously create more later on. And then in our home tab, the first card that I really like having is the search card. This is a custom card. And it is a custom search card. So obviously with any of these custom cards, you need to save them or download them from hacks. Um, there are a few custom cards that we're going to be using throughout this and I'll link a link below, leave a link below to all the custom cards that we use. The first one is the search card. That means that you've got everything at your fingertips if you need it. And then for the main room card, we're going to use a custom banner card. And that is because it gives us a nice box in which we can put all the entities. Um, and I really like this card. I think it gives a great aesthetic, it organizes things and it keeps uniformity throughout all your devices. So you, when, when you have multiple of these cards lined up next to each other. So we've added the heading, which is obviously the bedroom, a link which takes us straight to the bedroom tab. And then we need to add our entities. So our first one, is our light dot bedroom. This is the light group. Um, so it shows up here and we want to call it light so it doesn't, because otherwise it says bedroom and it, we know it's the bedroom because it's in the bedroom card. Our next one is a binary sensor. This is for Flory's desk so I know whether it's open or closed. At the moment it's unavailable, that's a Zigbee issue that I've got at the moment, but ignoring that, that's where it would show up. And then our last one is our... Our last one is our input boolean for sleeping. So that's where the sleeping mode is on or off. That's because I have sleeping mode automatically turn off when the alarm goes off, but the weekend I don't have an alarm obviously, so my sleeping mode actually stays on until I manually turn it off. I need to work out the best automation to fix that 
But for now, there's a simple boolean that I can toggle in case my automations aren't working because it thinks I'm still sleeping when actually I'm not. So then we have a media player. Now, by default, the media player takes up a whole line, which is very nice because that is a nice divide uh, in this section. And then we can add our next row. So in our next row, it's going to be predominantly climate related. I say predominantly, it is partially climate related. Ooh, help fuck a spell. Uh, and for this card, it's very clever. It can pull out specific attributes. So we want to attribute, or we want to establish the current temperature. We don't just want because the entity of the climate will be heat off or cool, or the state entity thing, which we don't want. Um, no. So by adding the attribute, we instead of getting heat, we're going to get the temperature that it currently is in the room. Obviously, if you have an average temperature for this, then you can take that from elsewhere. Um, from your sensor, but for this I'm just going to take it straight from the current temperature of the climate entity. Next we are going to have a slightly more complicated one and this is going to be the set temperature. So the attribute is the temperature and the name is set. And then what we're going to do is add an action. And this, I will show you what this script does uh, in a minute. And then the last thing on this is the input boolean for bed occupancy. And because it's an input boolean, it shows up like this, but I don't really want it to show up like this because it's actually a binary sensor that I want. So I'm going to set the domain to a binary sensor. And that just makes it appear like this rather than like this because I want to see it, its state. I don't want to be able to toggle it. Well, I say I don't want to be able to toggle it. I actually do want to be able to toggle it. So the action is input boolean dot toggle. So, in theory, I don't know why all these colors are completely wrong everywhere, uh, but in theory, that should be our first card. So we have bedroom, which toggles us along. We have our lights, our desk, and our sleeping mode, which we can turn on and off. We have our easy access for our media player. We have the current temperature, the set temperature, and the occupancy. And the occupancy, we can toggle on and off. The set temperature, we can also toggle. And I'll show you what that does now. So if we head over to our file editor, there we go. And then we head over to our scripts. We have the temperature toggle thing. Now what this does is it basically does something depending on the current state. So it'll cycle through the three values of set temperature that I want. So, and those three values are 13 degrees, 18 degrees, and 20 degrees. So if it's above 20 degrees, so the climate.room, remember we specified room in the card itself. If we go back in here, we specified room in the card itself here, so it knows bedroom. So then in, in the service, in the script, it says climate.room, which is bedroom, and it merges those. The temperature of it, which is the set temperature, if it's less than 20, then we do this. 
we cool the surface and we set the temperature of climate.room to 13 degrees. So if it's more than 20, it goes to 13, because if it's hot, we want it to turn cold. If it's less than 15, then we set it to 18 degrees, because if it's cold, we want it to go to a kind of medium ground, and then otherwise it will go to 21. So that will basically cycle it through between 13, 18, and 21 degrees. And obviously, if I've set it manually, I won't have set it exactly to one of those three. I might have set it to 22 and a half degrees. So if it's above that, it'll then drop right down to 13. So we have the control over what it does, basically. I'll leave a link to it below um, because actually getting this value template wasn't as easy as I had hoped. But we're here now and it works. And if we go back into here, you can see it working because if we click on this, goes from 13 to 18, and then from 18 to 21. So now that bit's done, we need to go into the bedroom. And this is a much simpler landscape to navigate. Um, we're going to be limiting our custom cards, and we just want all our entities on a page. We could make something a lot more complicated, but for now, let's not. So the first card is going to be very simple. We want a thermostat card for the bedroom. Done. Next, we need a button card. And that button card needs to navigate us to home. And if we do that, very simple. Then we click on that and we go home. Click on that and we come back. Okay, now I'm going to have an entities card. This is going to be for my sleep stuff. So in here, we have alarm time. We have alarm. We have bed scene. We have sleep scene. And we have a morning scene. Very simple. And we don't want the header toggle because we never want to trigger all these at once. Crikey, all sorts of stuff would go down. But that is that card, very easy. Now we want an, a glance card for our generic entities of the room. So in here, we're going to have our bedroom door, our bedroom motion, and our bedroom occupancy. Again, my Zigbee stuff is playing up. Next, we are going to have our mini media player. Now this is an incredible card, I love it, um, because it does everything very well. Mostly because of the group functionality that you can have with it. So, artwork, I want... So for the artwork, I want the cover. Don't want any of those to be doing anything. And then for the speaker groups, we obviously want to add these because they are very useful. The platform is, of course, Sonos. And our entities are The sitting room, the cave, and the kitchen. Boom. We have our card, we have our groups, we have our easy access playlists, and we have everything we need. So the last card, and this is the last card this time, is our lighting card. So this is another custom card. This is a vertical stack in card. Now 
And in here, we're going to put a selection of cards. First card being a custom paper buttons row. Custom paper buttons row. And these buttons are going to be some scripts. I'm using scripts because I extracted the hue scenes uh, using scripts and I've had them set up like that for a while. So these copy, these trigger a hue scene basically, um, which means that I still have control over them in the hue app, which is quite useful. And we want three of these. So we've got our three commonly used scenes. We've got our daytime scene, our evening scene, and our sleeping scene. Very simple. And then we need the rest of our entities. So we have an entities card. And our entities are bedroom light, There we go, and our four lights in there. Very simple. Oh, actually, it's not our four lights in there. Right, and that is all of our entities. So here we have our dashboard. Now it's a bit convoluted at the moment uh, if we move them all around. So you want them in an order that makes sense. To me, having the lighting at the top is key and the rest of it, you know, happens where it happens. Um, and there we go, that is our dashboard. Now you may have noticed that on my initial homepage, I also had another entities card which had some useful scenes easily accessible, such as, I didn't do anything, did it? Guest mode, sleeping, as I said, the sleeping situation causes problems at the moment. And then the kind of three scenes that I use during the day. And that just helps to make things a bit prettier. And now what of course you need to do is add a theme. I am a huge fan of this Kibibit dark cards theme. because It gives a nice background, it gives nice cards, and all in all I think it looks quite good. Um, there are plenty of other themes out there, but this is just my favourite at the moment. And there we have it. So there we go, a nice user interface for your rooms. Uh, a nice glance overview where you can trigger things directly from the main dashboard, or if you want, you can go into a detailed view for each room to control more things and see more information. So there we go. The reasonably simple room dashboard Lovelace display. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to find out more about my smart tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.